Hello there and welcome to Can Sanity. Today we're going to be making guacamole. And whenever I make guacamole, I always buy extra avocados and lime and mash them up, put the lime juice in it, vacuum seal it up, and then put it in the freezer so that I have some nice, delicious avocado to use in guacamole in the winter time. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my five avocados here and I've rinsed them. Um, ready to cut up and use uh, for my guacamole um, for today and then my I'll save some of the um, avocado to use uh, for guacamole in the future by freezing it and um, I just want to talk to you about what you can look for for a nice uh, guacamole or sorry a nice avocado is you want to pick you can pick these up green now I, I picked them up from the Costco in uh, a, a bag like this because I know that I'm going to um, freeze some of this avocado, uh, so don't hesitate to pick it up. And if it goes on sale, don't hesitate to pick up two bags of this and, and mash this up for um, use in the future. Now it sat on out on my counter for about three or four days, and it's turned this nice uh, brownish color. And you know, so I can tell by the look of it and by the feel, it's slightly soft that it's ready to be mashed. Now, don't pick ones up that are really dull in color and shriveled. You're likely to, when you cut into that, have some browning on the inside. So try to get them when they're looking like this. Now, the other indication um, that an avocado is nice and fresh is that that stem piece is in, intact. So if you're buying them as singles, look for ones in the grocery store that have that stem piece intact. And if it's not intact, it would look like, like that. With a slight indentation and with the, the stem piece intact that means that that's that's going to be a fresher avocado so i'm going to cut these up and show you how i i prepare the avocado for use for guacamole in the winter okay so when the avocado is slightly soft um, it's really easy to get the nice uh, green uh, flesh out of the avocado so all i do is i usually cut it in half where the near the where the pit is I'll give it a turn and then to get the pit out sometimes it just it's so loose that it'll fall out and you see how that's nice it's it's nice and green the whole way so um, if you feel comfortable with this you can just take a sharp knife and just do that and then twist and then you can take your your pit out like that so then what I do is I scoop out the um, flesh and if you just take a nice large spoon it just comes out really nicely and when the avocado is the perfect ripeness then it's going to just come out super easy you're not going to have to uh, really force it if it's a little bit firm then you um, you might have to work a little harder on it okay so I'm just gonna cut all these open and then we'll um, I'll show you how I put the mash together. Oh, that one just fell right out. Perfect. Okay, now you want to add some lime to your avocado and I like to use fresh lime if I can uh, if I have it on hand and so what I do with the fresh lime is I um, throw it in the microwave and I microwave it for 15 seconds on high just that helps soften it and then I give it a roll press hard and give it a roll that just kind of helps the lime separate from the the or the the flesh separate from the membrane a bit better and so it'll just make Make it so that you get more lime juice out of it. Now, if you don't happen to have fresh limes, you can always use bottled lime juice, but uh, I find the flavor is better with fresh. And so then you're gonna cut them in half. And I have a lime press here. So this is what I like to use for this when I'm only using lime, uh, juicing up two limes. You can also use a, a lemon reamer if you if you want to have that instead. So I'll just uh, do that now. You want to put your lime juice on your 
avocado as quickly as you can because if you leave this too long then the green uh, the avocados will start to brown and so to get that preserve that nice bright green color you want to put your um, citrus on your avocados and you could use lemon too but I prefer lime so I'll show you how I use this and then all you have to do is press and the juice comes out really nicely on this lime press and if I just take that open you'll see that there's not a lot left in that. To use the, the reamer, just take that and just hold it like this and then you just press all around. So that's one left. Now I'm going to mash this and then I'm going to taste it. If it tastes nice, has a nice balance of avocado and lime, then I'll probably just use one lime. But because I did use five fairly large avocados, I think I'm going to have to add more lime. Again, that lime or citrus that you add is important because if you don't add that, then your avocado will brown. Now, I like my guacamole to be a little bit chunky, so that's why I use a potato masher so that there's a little bit of chunks in there. I'm just gonna take a little taste. add more lime. So this is five large avocado. I believe I'll probably put two two limes in there. It'll depend on your lime. Some limes are really juicy and some are not. So that's the avocado and the lime and this is what I vacuum seal and I freeze. I don't bother putting all the ingredients for my guacamole in the, um, in the avocado that I freeze. I don't mind making that fresh when, um, when I do make my guacamole. So I'm just going to scoop out what I need for the, uh, uh, for the guacamole that I'm making today and then the rest I'm going to vacuum seal. Okay, so to make my guacamole, I'll just measure it out. Usually I don't bother measuring, I just do to taste, but I, just so you can see, this is a one cup measure. So I, I use two cups of mashed avocado with lime. And that's rough, because you're gonna taste as you make it. I want to freeze my um, my avocado that I have in the other bowl here, so I'm going to do that first because I don't want my, um, the mash to brown. And even though you put the lime juice in there, <clears throat> it can uh, brown a little bit. So we're gonna 
um, fill up some bags and vacuum seal. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is a pre-cut bag and so I'm just going to use that. Uh, that when you buy the uh, frid, uh, food saver uh, bags, they come, you buy them in the box, you get some that are already pre-sized. And so that's uh, fine for what I'm going to use here. So that's roughly one cup. Turn that over like that and then scoop in what I'm using. That's one. That's approximately what I need here. So you can go a little less if you think that you're going to need that little bit for the other package. So that, just dip that in the side. Another bag. a cup and a half of this last batch. And so if I had gone a cup out of three large avocados, if I had just measured out a cup and three quarter of the mash, then I would probably have three pretty evenly sized packages. So now, I'll show you how I vacuum seal. So the first thing I do is take the air, as much of the air out as I can. So I press my, my guacamole, or sorry, my avocado with lime into the corners. So I get the air out. And I like to freeze my um, packages um, fairly flat. So this is how I do it. I just kind of squish the air out and then use my hand and just squish it like this. I'm just going to make sure that there's not a, no air pockets in there. So it just will mean that it will freeze better. So you, you might have a few, that's okay. Okay, and then I just kind of make sure that I have some room for the machine to do its work. That's how I that's how I usually freeze them. I like freezing them flat because then they, they seem to take up less space in the in the freezer then and I can stack them and just keep my stack of, of avocado mash all together. Okay, so that's good. That's one. Okay, vacuum sealing is really easy. Um, you can trim off some of the excess if you want, but you want to leave at least an inch and a half of the bag where there's no filling um, because you don't want that to be sucked up into your into the, uh, the vacuum. But um, there's not a lot of liquid in this, so I don't really need to worry about that. But I am going to take off about an inch of this bag before I go ahead and vacuum seal it. And again, don't worry if you have a, some air pockets in your in your avocado, you're good. It's, when you have uh, a chunky um, avocado mash, you, it's just impossible to get all the air out. So I'm just going to just take off about an inch. So I just slide that in there and just use the, um, the uh, cutter to cut off a piece of the plastic just so I don't need that extra in there. And then turn it on, and then it's going to get loud. <laughs> Just put that in there. In the center. Okay, so now the, it's sealing. 
and uh, so it'll take a minute to seal. And then uh, what I do is I use just a permanent marker and just label what it is and, and the date at the top. And you can even take a piece of paper towel and just, just do that. Take a piece of paper towel and just, just to be a little bit cleaner, take it and just open it up the, uh, this part here and just run that through there just to take out a little bit of that mash so that that's just, it's just a little cleaner to just clean that out a little bit. And so that's my first package. Now, if you were um, vacuum sealing up something that's a little bit has a little bit more water, um, you're going to have to be mindful of cleaning out the um, this tray because if there's a little bit of water that comes through in the vacuum, it'll end up in here. And then to get it going again, you have to make sure that these um, these parts are are nice and dry, and so clean it out, wash it. Now there's no liquid in that, so but I just wanted to show you how you would clean that out. And so then I'm going to just cut off the little excess here on this one again. It doesn't have to be completely even. This one here had a little less mash in there, so just pull that down. seal just so that it's just going to be nice flat packages then for the freezer and again this is not necessary but I just find it's just cleaner when you go to thaw it to not have a lot of puree or mash um, up at the top because you're going to thaw to use this you're going to take it out and put it in your fridge overnight and then it'll thaw, and then you can add the rest of your ingredients the next day. And you know, it'll keep a couple days thawed in your um, fridge. It won't, because you vacuum sealed out the air, it won't go brown. So it's great to make these nice little um, avocado lime mashes, and so you're ready for your next party. Okay, so I have my cilantro in a uh, a bowl, uh, I have a large eight cup measuring cup filled with water and I bought this cilantro two days ago and when I buy it I don't put it in the fridge I put it in a bowl like this and I put water in it and I put a bag over top and as you can see it's a little bit foggy in there and that's good you're sort of making a little greenhouse for your cilantro and this will keep if you have really good fresh cilantro that you've purchased it'll keep for several days like this on your counter so when you go to use it then when you take off the bag you can see how beautiful that cilantro is so you can do this with uh, parsley cilantro any of your fresh herbs that you buy so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off at least half of this because I love my cilantro in my uh, in my guacamole. If you're not a fan of cilantro, use parsley. Or if you don't want to put any fresh herbs in your um, guacamole, you don't have to. But I love the flavor of cilantro in my guacamole. Okay, so I've washed my, um, I rinsed my cilantro and then I just spun it in my salad spinner. And then I just like to take all the leaves off. It's okay if there's some small stems in there, but mostly what I want is the leaves. And so I will easily put a cup of fresh cilantro in my guacamole. And if I, it's, it's really flavorful, I might even add some more, but we'll start with a cup of chopped fresh cilantro. And so what I'll do is I'll just take that and then just chop that up. When I grow cilantro in my garden, then I, I, I just love making fresh guacamole for my fresh cilantro. 
this store-bought cilantro because it is end of November. I do this by eye, and I don't. You don't need to do it really fine. So I'll take this, and I'll just add that in. That's about close to a half a cup there, and I'll give that a stir. My cat's very curious here. I don't know if she's. <laughs> you can see her in the video here, but she loves salad. She's my veggie cat. And so whenever I bring out the salad spinner, she <laughs> just has to see what I what it is that I'm what I'm spinning, and she licks her chops because she thinks it's lettuce. <laughs> Strange cat. Never had a cat that liked lettuce before, but she absolutely loves it. Okay, next I'm going to add some tomatoes, and these are tomatoes for my garden. Uh, I still have bowls of tomatoes ripening on my on my dining room table so I'll just take out the seeds just so that they're, it's not really watery. And you can put up to a cup of chopped tomatoes. You can leave this out if you're not a big fan of tomatoes. Um, but we, we like to add it to our guacamole. So what I do is I just, like I said, take the seeds out just so that I don't have a lot of water. And this is a three-quarter cup measure here so and then just roughly chop these up. I like it chunky so I don't mind it that they're not the same size. It's fine for me. I was going to say if you don't happen to have a lime press or a reamer you, you know you certainly can just microwave that lime on high for 15 seconds cut it open and squeeze it you have the strength to squeeze it to get the lime juice out so it looks like this is going to be about three quarter cup of tomato no problem maybe a little bit more So that's three quarter cup. I'm gonna add that to my mash and my cilantro. Just give that a stir and see what it looks like. I have these other tomatoes that I've cut open, so I'll probably go up to a cup. And so you see that's nice, some nice chunks in there. I'm just gonna add some more. Just I've, I like I said, I have so many tomatoes ripening on my on my dining room table. I don't mind using some of them up this way. Okay, next to add my seasoning. So I like garlic, so I have three medium-sized uh, cloves here. You can just do one or two, or maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll start with two and just press, mince that in there. If you like to taste your garlic and get a good hit of that in your, um, in your guacamole, you can always also slice and chop so you have bigger pieces. So I'm gonna mix that in. And I can taste that and see, but I can tell that I'm going to want to put one more in there. So I'm just going to use it. I peeled it. Might as well use it. Add that in there. Mix that up. Now I have gloves on because I'm going to be cutting up some jalapenos. And I don't want to get a chemical burn. So I will take... This is the jalapeno that I grew in my garden. So I'll just see that slice, take out the seeds. It just uh, smells beautiful. Love red jalapenos. And the red jalapenos will turn red on the vine if you leave them long enough. And sometimes when you cut them and just leave them at room temperature, like you can see this one's starting to turn red too. So this one 
is looking good inside too. Take those seeds out. Now, as you can see, we like our food spicy, so I'm putting two jalapenos in. Um, I love to do a mix of red and green if I can because this just gets nice color into the into the um, guacamole. And then I'll just use a better knife here. Just pop that up. So again, you can just add some and taste, and then add more. So we'll just do with the um, do the, the red first, and then do my green. And you know, don't be brave. You have to wear gloves when you're chopping hot peppers. If you can't find gloves, you can just put your put a baggie on your hand, and that will work. A nice thick baggie. Um, I know PPE is hard to find these days because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So. And I don't mind my jalapenos again being a little bit chunky, so I'm not worried about mincing that too fine. So I think I'm just going to do one and a half today. And now the advantage of freezing your mash, your avocado mash with lime, is that A, it's quick, and um, B, if you want to make your guacamole to taste, you can do that. It, you know, I could freeze this as well and just have it all prepared for myself and uh, take that out already prepared. But uh, the tomatoes will get a little bit more mushy if you freeze them. And so I like to have that, um, the texture in my guacamole. And also, if I have the mash frozen with just the lime juice, then if I have someone that visits that doesn't like cilantro or doesn't like um, uh, heat, I can make a very mild guacamole. So now we're just going to add some salt and pepper. And this is just to taste, so I'll just grab some black pepper. About a, I, I start with a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. You could also, if you didn't have jalapenos, you could put uh, some red chili flakes in this instead for heat. And I usually just add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. You can use table salt or kosher salt, whatever you prefer. You just have to use the table salt this time. And that's good. Now, to get your, to keep your avocado from browning, if you're not going to serve that right away, you can take your bowl and just um, push out the air. And this is a large bowl, so I don't think I would necessarily you put this much olive oil in it. But what you would do is you just press out your um, your guacamole and then what you do to preserve it and this is a large bowl so I wouldn't use one that has such a, a large um, uh, bowl uh, surface usually I would use like a mason jar or something like that or something that's tall and has a um, small surface on the top but to preserve it you can just put some olive oil put a thin layer of olive oil all over top and You'll mix that in then when you serve it, because that's going to look slightly salt. Just make sure that's all over top of the guacamole, and then put that, put a piece of cellophane on that, or if you have a lid for your bowl, do that, and then you can just pop that in the fridge, and it won't brown if it has that thin layer of olive oil. Okay, so my guacamole is done, and so I'll just pop that in the fridge. I put a, a, a layer of cellophane over top uh, just to minimize the amount of air that's getting to the surface of that guacamole. I do have my thin layer of olive oil, which is also protecting the surface, but you want to seal it up tight because you want to minimize the amount of air that's in your dish because it's the air that's going to cause that oxidation. Uh, which will um, turn your guacamole brown. And so you want to preserve that nice bright green color, seal it up nice and tight. Now this will keep nice in the fridge for a couple days. And if you want to 
um, ensure that you uh, keep that freshness. You can pop that into a, a bag and vacuum seal it up and then it'll keep even longer in the fridge. Now um, I have some fantastic recipes on the website um, for you to try if you haven't already. My black, easy black, my black bean and salsa quesadilla and my um, easy turkey taco recipe and I also have a recipe which is my kids absolute favorite it's my kids favorite slow cooker bean burrito spread so if you haven't tried those recipes yet go to the website and take a look at those recipes because they're easy and they're delicious and your family's just gonna love you when you make them and if you make up this guacamole in advance then you have that to serve with it as well and stay tuned because I have some I have even more fantastic recipes to share with you so please take a look at that website often because I'm I'm adding recipes to that website every single day and so if you are enjoying the videos that on the YouTube channel please subscribe because then you're gonna get a notification which will tell you when I've done another fantastic video I hope you've enjoyed this video have a great day